Welcome to the Jamaica Downtown Jazz Festival brought to you by the Jamaica Center for the Arts. We have a wonderful, wonderful festival planned for you the rest of today and tomorrow. So to get all those rumors that you heard about Jazz is Dead, it is alive and well and it is here this afternoon on this stage here in Jamaica, Queens. Being in arts and culture, I've always known and sort of been immersed in the fact that Queens and specifically Southeast Queens, specifically Jamaica, has this long, wonderful, super rich tradition of jazz. What's great about JCAL is we've tried to like preserve the past, but also really, really important, sort of chart a path to the future. I'm a little overwhelmed right now. This is my second in-person performance, so I'm, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm getting used to real applause and not just the emojis, the reactions, you know what I mean? It's like a breath of fresh air. I mean, there's nothing like that, but live streams really don't compare to having people yeah. react and applaud and sing along. We've been locked down for the past year and a half. And I'm so glad to be out here at uh, the Jamaica Arts Center, live music. This is wonderful. Uh, I'm glad music is back. But this is just a great feeling. And uh, people are coming out, uh, enjoying themselves more. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Give it up to Maestro Billy Boss on trumpet. The one and only Maestro Axel Mosca, Laos Lago Piano. We have Maestro Jonathan Michelle Obeja. Maestro Jonathan Michelle. Maestro on the Fundy. Maestro on the Fundy. I'm enjoying myself really because I haven't had live music in a while. It made me go back to when I was younger and was raised in Providence and we went to Newport Jazz. And I used to go to uh, walk around in between sets and do all kinds of things and run out and, th and come back and then there would be some more jazz or some more music for you to listen to. If I'm remembering correctly, um this is the first time that the three of us, aside from a very small audience at the gallery like maybe six months ago or something, this is the first time that the three of us have played to like a, a proper art audience since February of 2020. So it's pretty exciting to hear you guys clapping and see you smiling. Thank you so much. wonderful, you know, being able to be in a space and enjoy some art together, because I don't know, uh, after this whole year we haven't really been able to uh, come together in mass and enjoy ourselves, you know. It feels, it feels amazing because we're both musicians, we both actually play saxophone, but also just 
just to hear like some of our professors or people that we look up to hearing that it just inspires us and it keeps everything churning sure it's like really amazing to see live music again and know that there's hope you know there's light at the end of the tunnel you know especially for us like because even our teachers for a long time didn't have no gigs and now to see that they got some too it's like man good times are ahead for sure he is considered one of the most influential saxophonists of his generation. He is a composer and as a conceptualist, concentrating his efforts on perfecting a fine mix between Latin American folkloric music and jazz. <laughs> So much history right here in Queens, especially in Southeast Queens, because I gotta give a shout out to St. Albans, because we've had so many great jazz artists who've come out of St. Albans, and today is a testament of that as we continue our rich, uh, our rich tradition in celebrating culture and arts, but especially some good music. great it's good to uh you know have people out here come enjoy the music it's good to be outside the weather's nice we were just out here kind of chilling it's cool to be back and just sharing music and <laughs> seeing your friends and saying what's up to everybody <laughs> gallery for about uh, 28 29 years and uh, it's the most welcoming place I feel for both musicians and artists it's just it's just great to be uh, out and about and have live experiences in this in the age of COVID you know um, blessing to hear live music anytime I can Oh, it's great. And the water's perfect. Oh, it's amazing. You don't have to, it's good that it's on the lawn. You don't have to worry about people breathing on you, you know? We're musicians too, so we just like love to go out and support. It's only appropriate that, that we have this downtown Jamaica Jazz Fest here in the epicenter of, of where jazz, you know, this is, you know, Ella, Basie, Lena, you know, everybody that's here in, in Southeast Queens, we're excited about that. And, and for the past few years, four or five years, this is what we tried to do with all of the development that is happening there. We want to make sure that the arts is really the epicenter of downtown Jamaica. There's a rainbow I think it's great that jazz is back. Uh, live music in Jamaica is uh, is back and affordable. It's important that it's affordable because a lot of folks don't have income. I don't have an income, so I'm pleased to be able to come to a free festival. So I'm very pleased about this. And uh, the, the weather is perfect, so it's been a great uh, weekend, a great two days to have this festival. Ravi is a critically acclaimed Grammy-nominated saxophonist, band leader, and composer, born in Long Island, the second son, I hope this is right, Robbie, you're laughing, I know about these bios, but this part is, I know it's correct, 
the son of John Coltrane and Alice. Thank you all so much to Jamaica Art Center, Jake Howe, the Jazz. My name is Leslie Harrison.